Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is another time you're bringing the word of God. So the word of God today is about the window of blessing. The window and doors of blessing. What are the windows and doors that open? What are the things that open the windows and doors of your blessing? What are the things that open or what open the windows and the doors of our blessing? So, so the word of God is coming from the book of Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 3, New International Version says, um, New International Version uh, says, Deuteronomy 28, two to two, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2 to 14. This is New International Version, 2 to 14. All this blessing will come to you and accompany you if you obey the Lord God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young, like young of your livestock, the calves of your hand and lambs of your flock. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies, the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come to you in one direction, but free in seven directions. Verse 8. The Lord will send a blessing to your bands and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you today. The Lord will bless, establish you in his holy people. This is verse 9, Deuteronomy 28, verse 9. The Lord will establish you as his holy, holy people as he promised you on oath if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in the obedience to him. Then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. They will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, in the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground. In the land he swore to your ancestor to give, to give you. Verse 12. The Lord will open heaven's storehouse of his bounty to send the rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, you give many money to many nations, but you will borrow from none. The Lord will take, will make you head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commandment of the Lord, your God, that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be the top and never the bottom. Do not turn aside from of any of the commands I give you today, to the light or to the left, following other gods or serving other them. Hallelujah. That is the word of God from the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy verse, chapter 28, verse 2 to 14. It's talking about the blessing that the Lord brings to his people. Uh, the Lord was talking to the children of Israel, which we are Israel today. The Israel in the Bible are real Israel, the people of Israel, the country of Israel, the Israel we know. But today the Israel is the people who obey the kingdom and the work and the word of God. This is the Israel we are talking today. Remember, every time whatever was said in the Old Testament is spiritual. It was physical to spiritual. It was physical before, but now we are talking about spiritual. Remember, long time ago, the church was a physical building where people used to worship. And in the church, there was something called Holy of Holies, a, a secure place in front of the church. That place is where the people went to every maybe six months, one year, and the only the pastor or bishop or priest were allowed to go in that uh, secluded house in the center of the church, at the front of the church, where bulls, animals were slaughtered, and sin were torn, and people were forgiven their sin. But when Jesus Christ died, that temple, that cutting of that holy of holies was cut into two from top to bottom, that signified that we no longer have to go through pastors to plead for sin through the Holy of Holies inside a building, 
but the church is inside us and we can pray to be holy through Christ Jesus who opened the window that we have a direct connection, direct wired to heaven to speak to our God. We no longer go to a building to seek holiness. It is us to pray directly to God and we are the church. The church is no longer a building. The church is no longer a building. There are so many denomination people in the church, the vibrant churches like Assembly of God, Baptist Church, uh, you call them Redeemed Gospel Church. Uh, you can name all the powerful churches you know in this world, the most they are called, they are called vibrant churches. The vibrant churches that worship in truth and they worship in the Holy Spirit, they believe in the Holy Spirit. We know their churches don't believe in the Holy Spirit. We know the church that they all believe in the Holy Spirit, like full gospel, like peace, like a Baptist Assembly of God church. But there are so many people going to hell in this church. There are so many people who are not right with God. There are so many people who are destined to go to hell. If they die today, but if they repent, they will go to heaven. But there are so many people in these churches who are going to hell because the church is not inside the building. It doesn't matter how powerful the church is. It doesn't matter how powerful the pastor in that church is moving the whole world into the realm of spiritual revival of the church of this end time. There are so many people going. If they die today, they go to hell. Because the church is no longer a building. Where people say Catholic, uh, SEK, they, don't be, they, they are not vibrant churches, or they say like a, a SEK or other denomination. There are some denominations they, they, which are they like jumping, shouting, like we you know there's, there, there's, there's those, those uh, Pentecostal, we call them Pentecostal churches. Because during the time of uh, Martin Luther, there was only a Catholic. But they opposed the worship and the practice of Catholic or buying indigency, and they said, we need to follow the Bible critically. Now that's when they, there was Protestant, they protested. Again, it's the practice of Roman Catholic during the time of Constantinople. They protested. Martin Luther came with a protest. That's why there was a protestant. And the first protestant church was called Lutheran Church. But we have so many Christians in these protestant churches that believe in the Holy Spirit and they are vibrant, going to hell. If they die today, because the church, it doesn't matter where you worship, whether Catholic, whether SK, whether Baptist, whether assembly. But the idea is, are you right with God? Are you following the Bible? Do you obey the word of God? Do you practice Christianity? Do you live Christ? Do you show Christ? Do you produce the fruit of the spirit of God? Of love, joy, kindness, patience, self-control, goodness, gentleness. Do you walk as Jesus walked? Do you walk with the Holy Spirit? Do you obey the Bible? So we are introducing the message saying long time the church was a building but now church is within us we are talking about the blessing of obedience what are the things that open the doors of our blessings what are the things that open the windows of the blessing to come to us the door for things to come open the door Jesus said that in the book of Revelation 3.20 I am knocking at your door Revelation 3.20 I am knocking at your door It's not a physical door It's the door of your heart The door of your soul The door of your mind The door of your heart Open the door And I'll come and dine with you I'll come and give you peace I'll come and give you happiness I'll come and give you joy I'll come and give you contentment in life I'll come and give you Satisfaction Though things may not go in the way you think they should be. Because life is not straight. Many times we say we are going from step one in our planning to ten. But you find yourself you are going from one, seven, three. Things doesn't go straight. And then people get stressed. They go to mental hospital. They go to look for psychiatric, mental doctors. Some are mad and kill themselves. Others take poisoner because things does not work their way. They married, say, I'll marry, then buy a house, then do water, then didn't work. He married, marriage did not work. Somebody cheated, he married. But the Bible says, I am knocking at the door. I'll give you peace. 
Whereas things, you, your marriage was, the children are taken, the marriage is not working. It is Jesus who gives peace. It is not children. It's not a husband. It's not a wife. It's not a job. It's not going to Australia or Canada or America. It is Jesus. That's why you see so many rich people. They are killing themselves. They are crying in TV for missing political seats. Because it's God who gives peace like no other. The song introduction of this sermon was singing by Darling Check. Your name, Jesus, is a shelter like no other. It's a peace like no other. It's a blessing like no other. Israel Houston sang a song and said, Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. Nothing in this world could satisfy. I thought marriage would satisfy. It did not fear me. I thought money would satisfy. It didn't satisfy. I thought when I buy mortgage, I'll be happy. I was not happy. I thought when I bring my people next to me in a developed country, I'll be happy. They, in fact, made me to live in debt. So, Israel Houston sang a song, Your presence is heaven to me. Nothing, nothing in this world could satisfy. Jesus, he said, nothing in this world could satisfy. The time Israel Houston was singing that song, he must have gone through things that, you know, satisfy and realize it's Jesus. I, I thought he's a wife. I, I thought he's helping my people they were coming around me, I'll be happy. They in fact put me into bankrupt. I thought he's marrying this lady, this man. In fact, he made me worse than how my parents had built me all my life. He destroyed the house of life my parents had built for me. And he made me useless. So, my Israel also must have gone. And he said, Jesus, you are the cup that never ran dry. The cup of marriage ran dry. The cup of friends ran dry. The cup, the cup of money ran dry. The cup of mortgage ran dry. But Jesus is the cup that never ran dry. In fact, the Bible says in John 4, 13 to 14, Jesus is the cup that never ran dry. John 4, 13 to 14. It is Jesus wearing up to heaven. You will never thus. And it will wear up to heaven. A cup of water that never ran dry. So this message is about windows that open the door of our breath. What are the things that open the door of our life? The door of our blessing. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, I am knocking at your door to come and give you your blessing. I'm knocking at your window. Open for me. So when somebody is knocking at the door, he must be willing to enter. When somebody knocks at your door where you live there, in Kenya, in America or Sweden, somebody come and knock, 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 knock. he wants to enter inside. So Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, he is knocking. He's knocking at the door. That means he wants to be get involved in our life. He wants to get involved in your business. You want to get involved in your daily undertaking of things. He want to establish that business you are doing. He want to give you peace. We are talking about. We are talking about things that open the doors and windows of our blessing. So we are saying long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Israel was the real Israel. Israel was the real Israel. The Israel we know. And we know Israel got independent in 1948. And Jesus said, when you see the fig tree shedding leaves, know the summer is near. And people say it is Israel. God was talking about the freedom of Israel. When God said, when you see the fig tree shedding leaves, know the summer is near. And the interpretation of many people of in Bible interpreter they say it was talking about freedom of Israel. And Israel got independence in 1948. Whereas they talk about Israel, the real Israel we know. But there is a time Israel, the true church, will be given freedom to worship. Freedom to live in the kingdom of God. Freedom to worship. Because remember, Antichrist will desolate the church and make it like it is not. Remember the dry bones in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. And Jesus told Ezekiel, dry bones, these dry bones you see, they are dead. Rotten and I have no life. It is true Christian. 
who have no life. They do not have revival. They do not have peace. They are God. They have asked for Christianity to hear the word of God, to play in stolen. It is gone. It was taken. They were desolated. They had no right. So there is a time in Israel that it will be returned to the former place of ruin. So that is the freedom of Israel. But we talk about the real Israel. Got it in 1948. But the true Christian will also have the Bible saying in Joel 2, verse 22 to 28, the return of things that were stolen, eaten by rockers, by the army, they will be returned. So the church we are talking about today, the Israel we are talking about today, Jesus, when he was giving the Deuteronomy 28, when God was telling Israel, or telling Moses and his people, when you obey my commandment, I will bless you to where you are going, to the land I give you, to the Canaan you are going. But that was Israel, and we know. The little Israel, we know the country. But the Israel today, as we speak, as we interpret this Bible today, it is the church of God. It's people who obey the Bible. It's people who live according to the promises of God. It's people who walk according to the promises of God. These are the people we are talking about. It is people who obey God. It is people who live according to the word of God. It is people who obey the Bible. When they say, if you obey my commandment, I will bless you. You will be blessed when you go out. You will be blessed when you come back. You will be blessed in your going and your coming. Your store will be full of food. It is the true people who obey the word of God. It is the people who obey Jesus. Even you there, you have not believed in Jesus. If you obey, you are in this bracket. You are in this cocoon. So, we are talking about the windows of blessing. What are the windows that God opened? What are the windows that open? What are the things that, sorry, what are the things that open the doors of blessing? What are the things that open the windows of their blessing? Remember, Satan has blessing. If you're not careful, you get a spouse program from the kingdom of darkness to come and fear you spiritually and life-wise. If you don't pray, you get a job that is not according to the will of God. If you don't pray and obey God, you will get a house or go to a region that was not supposed to be yours and it was engineered for hell, so you fall. So we are saying there are also blessings that are from God. They are there, there is a lot of evidence in the Bible. Jesus, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, he was told by Satan himself, I'll give you all these things. These houses, this money, these beds, these cars, these riches. I'm just, I'm just trying to be, lit, to be real, literary because Satan will say, I'll give you all my wealth, all my riches, if you obey me. So Satan has blessing. And Satan's blessing looks so good to be true. We are talking about what are the things that open the door and window of blessing. Why is it that so many people, they have bad, bought houses, but they are living a very pathetic life. They are so, un they live an unpeaceful life. Some people are so blessed, money-wise, economically, but they are not happy. When you look at celebrities, for example, not all of them, but most, when you look at percentages, some of them, they live very pathetic life. And you see common man who have nothing is very happy. You can see some people you know, you, you are listening to people you know. They are so blessed money-wise, but the life they don't have, peace they don't have. It's all depend with the base and the root. So we are saying you can get blessing that are not from God if you are not careful. So what are the windows 
because you may interpret wrong and say I am, it's just any money, it's just any job, it's just anything. It's just a, I'm married, I have children, I have wife. But you're not happy. So we are talking about what are the things that open the doors and windows or little blessing that are blessed and, and backed from heaven. Backed from heaven. We have read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And he's saying in verse number 2, Deuteronomy 28, 2, that all these blessings written in the book of 28, so Deuteronomy 28, verse number 2, he say, if you obey me, if you could my commandment, you will get all these blessings written from verse 3 to 14. All these blessings will be yours. So what is the step one because there's somebody who said who sang a song in my language i think swahiri i'm going back and trace where i lost the first step where did i lose the step because you found yourself you're in the long road you're in the long step you're stepping in the wrong side you go back retracing where you lost the track so what i'm asking where do we lose the track we find ourselves, we have moved so far, but when we refresh back, we miss a step. We missed, we missed step one. And when you read this chapter 28, verse 2 says, the step for God blessing, the key to open the door, the key to open that window of those blessings is obedient, is to obey, is to do right. No wonder God said obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So when you obey, you may pray and go to mountain to pray and fast. But you didn't obey. There's something you are supposed to do, but you didn't do it. But you went to pray and fast. Obedience surpasses sacrifice. Praying and fasting. And going to do the word of God, but there's something you are supposed to tick before you go there. I give example because as a teacher, I'm a trained teacher, we are taught you have to use example to help the student understand. It's when you use the example that makes sense to the student that they understand. When you use the little things they know and relate to the learning, the student understand. The student correlate. And link learning with things they are used to. That's why when you are preaching, you have to use example, people to understand. For example, you cannot prevent children to speak to their daddy and you go and pray and fast and expect the prayer to be heard by God. You cannot, because I'm talking about this because it's happening in the whole world, especially women. We are in the end time. And end time, the Bible says we are, we are in the time of end. We have been end time for many years. We always live in end time. There is no other end time you see. There is no other end time and end of ages you see is this one. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, this generation we are in, this digital generation, this generation we are in, we will not pass. We did not finish until you see everything I told you before. You'll be sold by your sister and your brother. You'll be handed in by your wife as Delira gave out his husband to the enemy of God. That is what the Bible says in Matthew 24. You'll be given out by your people to be sealed in the kingdom of darkness. That is the book of Matthew 28, 24. That this generation will not pass at you see until you see You've been prevented to worship God. It, you don't have to be told. It's because of the trials that are coming to you to make you fail. So long as you are Christian, the trials, the heat, the grit, the power, could be you are hit, you are attack. And the idea is to you to give up. So you don't worship God. Abomination of desolation. And you don't be hit by outsiders and, and foreigners. The war is greater in your marriage. The war is greater within your family. The war is greater with the closest people who are next to you. You are a church. 
The Satan is not stupid. He uses things you have no clue. He uses your church you go every Sunday. He uses the wife and husband you live every day. He uses your mother who bore you and your father. And you don't know that the Bible says you have to pray and fast. Because only those who have wisdom will understand. Because we don't fight spirit, physical things. We have to pray and fast for God to reveal to you. So I'm using an example. The step one we miss in life, we get blessing. I bought a mortgage. I went to Canada. I built plots in Kenya, a lot of them. And I'm not happy. I have no peace. I feel hopeless. Because the step we miss, you took blood, innocent blood. The God said, I am the defender of the weak. You sleep with someone, get children, knowing very clearly you are not interested in that person. You are not in this marriage. It is happening everywhere. There are so many people who have been cheated in the quest of going abroad to marry someone, take somebody abroad to be your wife or husband. Either way, I have seen men cheating women. When they get papers of that country, you wonder, is this the same man? And he leave and go and marry somebody else. And he leave you and doesn't care whether you have children. And marry somebody else who he wanted. He just wanted to use to get the citizenship for that country. The same as the women. You bring a lady. When he gets citizenship or sperm resident, you wonder, guy, is he the same person? He may be even be telling you you live together, but you can see there is nothing. You don't have to be told. Even a little child of one year, when you are unhappy, you will know, or you will know and start crying. When you are stressed, the baby will know. Psychology is in everyone. It's a natural thing given by God. You can read the mind of someone so long as you are a normal human being. You can know when your wife or your husband put away you, you he done away with you. You don't have to be told. Even if you say they come with you together, you can know and you can see. Even a baby can know. Psychology is for everyone. It's natural to everyone, even kids. You can see the eyes is telling you, stop now talking to me. Go away now. You can see somebody smiling, smiling to you. You can know somebody talking to you by looking at the eye. Example, step one we miss is obedient. When you read children, speak to their daddy, though you don't want the man. When you read children, speak to their mother. When you know you don't want this man or woman, that is obedient. That's why we miss. Another example of obedience, where do we miss? You say you are a Christian, but you want to involve in his spirit. You know, we have so many people, especially in Africa, who have evil wisdom. They have evil wisdom. They have some secret. There's some things they do to try to control you. There's some things they do. And it's usually inherited. In most cases, I hear. It's inheritance. But it's not their own power. It's certain power. Even the Bible says Antichrist will be very powerful. And he can know even your mind what you're thinking. But when you read the Bible, it says it's not Satan Antichrist's power. Because Antichrist is a man. It is not his power. It is the power of Satan. Even those people in Africa who have juju. Juju. Juju is witchcraft. They have evil wisdom. And there's something they do to you to control you. It is not their power. They think they have evil wisdom. It's not their power. It is engineered from hell, but they don't know. I saw someone somewhere removing grub from toilet and laughing quickly. Doing complete satanic work of darkness. And another one said, I will steal, will you steal your key. Which power are they using to steal your key? Which power is this man running to the toilet, removing grub of the toilet and speaking satanic language? Or Satan is the language you don't understand. Who do you think this is? You think he has wisdom. But it's not his wisdom. It's Satan. He's engineer from hell. It's hell engineer. I saw another one. We have people who have secret wisdom. There are women in Africa who give you their monthly period. They mix with food. I thought it's a lie. I thought this thing is a lie, it's a hoax. But I've heard even the biggest pastor in Kenya talking about it. 
the terev, the terev, terev fasters. I've been told by old men with grey about the same. They mix their mother period with food that when you eat it, you become a fool. Who give them this satanic wisdom? It is Satan. And that person is giving money to the church. He can give even a million. He's a Christian playing every day. How? Tell me. How will this person be blessed? And he's doing witchcraft. How? Which God? We don't have God and a God. We used to sing a song in my language. Hakuna dhambi dogo mbere za mungu. There is no literal and big sin in the hand of God. Because people think sin is just immorality, prostitution, just sleeping, fornication. Most Christians, especially in Africa, they believe sin is just if you sleep with a girl somewhere or a woman, and you're kids, that's the sin. But they can do corruption. They can witch you. They can do something to you to control you. And these are Christian. I'm talking about Christian. This is not nothing new. Nothing, the Bible say, or it says, even the common man says, history is always the same. Scientists say, matter cannot be created. Matter cannot be destroyed or created. It's always the same thing. History is always the same and it repeats itself. History repeats itself. There is nothing new. Look at this. Those who are killing Jesus who are Christian. They were saying they are Christian. They were even saying Jesus is spreading the worst gospel. And they knew Bible from end to end and they knew every verse and they can recite it but they are using the power of Satan they are practicing Christianity and at night they are doing dark work of darkness they were fully drunk and led by the spirit of the devil we are so many Christians and they are still doing satanic dark world things and they are still praying and shedding tears and fasting. How? Tell me how. How can you mix? There is no mix. The Bible say in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24 to 25. A time is coming, verse 23 to 24. A time is coming and now it's here where the true worshiper must worship God in truth and in spirit. You must. It's not a request. You must worship God in truth and in the spirit of God. In truth and in spirit. Truth of the word of God. Practical Christianity. You practicing the word of God as it is. If it's marriage, you have to do it the way it says. If it's bringing up children, you have to do exactly as the Bible says. You cannot rob children and hide from their daddy and expect to be blessed and you are, you are worshiping God in truth and spirit. Nowhere. This is the fall away of Christianity. There are so many Christians in the whole world. They are making men cry. When they go abroad, they just focus on their goal and use men for children. This is called the great fall. Lay, predict in the Bible. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 that Jesus will not come until there is a great fall. Great movement. The whole world sweeping across of the great fall of the saints. They say you can marry as many times you want. So long as marriage doesn't work. The great fall of Christianity. You need someone. You can't even like that. But the first marriage fa failed so that you do that. What you are being told by the enemy engineering route of way of darkness. That was the intent, intent, intended meaning. Your spouse was blinded and did not see. She was drunk and full of the spirit of the devil. Just like Judas who was drunk. He was ministering and preaching with Jesus for 33 years. But the same, the devil entered to sell his Messiah. The same person who loved you so much, the same devil entered to fear you and lead you to the, devil, the, the root of the devil of the hell, hell highway. There is no way you can miss the first step of going to the north and you turn and go to the south and accept to, to reach the north. There is no way you can turn 180 degrees, go to the east, 
and if and you think you are going to the west and you reach to the west there's no way there is no way you will do witchcraft you know what you did to that man you know and you know and you know those satanic things you did and expect to reach heaven no way you took over children you sleep with a man for children only and you knew and you knew and expect to reach heaven and expect to be a christian let's say and expect to be a christian because you can repent and renew and transform and change and do the right way but i say expect to be a christian let's put it the right way there's no way you can keep witching and doing corruption and lying and cheating and have jealousy and do all sort of evil and expect to be a christian and to be singing and dance in the field of god there is no way you can sing dance of satan in god field in certain field there's no way you can sing the song and dance of heaven in certain field and expect to be in god kingdom what i mean singing the dance of heaven in certain field is this way you are saying you are christian doing all sort of christianity to a daily routines but you have jealousy you don't have love you are doing fornication you are you are you are using your man for evil your woman you are feeling jealousy you are planning to fail someone and expect to be a christian no way the bible say as you have read blessing of god come through obedience it is obedient you have to obey you have to do the way the bible say you have to read the bible you have to follow the bible as it say you have to read the bible you have to follow the word of god you have to follow the word of god you have to read the bible you have to walk according to the word of god you have to follow if it's marriage you have to do the way the bible says if it's a sexual relationship with your husband and wife you have to do the way the bible say the bible says in the book of first corinthians 7 sexual life should be every day if possible don't even fast but you are christian there a woman or a man especially a woman when children come they know sex life but that's not the bible the bible says you have to maintain your sexual life otherwise you'll be tested outside if you don't do the way the bible says there is no way you are practicing christianity if you're bringing up children you have to do the way the bible says if it's relating with the people you have to do the way the bible says if it's work you have to do the way the bible says if it's in the church the way you do you have to do the, the, the way the bible says it's not just singing you have to worship in truth and in spirit. You are not there for show off. We have to follow the way the Bible says. It is the word of God. It's obedient that opens the door of blessing. You get the real blessing. Blessing that comes from God. Blessing that are real. Blessing that are blessed from God. Blessing that comes from Jesus. The blessing, the true blessing. The true peace. The true contentment in life. The true satisfaction in life. The true meaningful life. You may have money, but you don't have a meaningful life. You may have a husband and family and children and everything working, but you don't have a meaningful life. Many people are committing suicide. They have marriage that are working. They have husband that are of them. They have money. They have house. We saw a doctor in Kenya last year. He had a big hospital of his own. He had a family. He injected himself poison and his children. And they all died. But he had money. He had job. He had his own hospital. But he injected poison in himself and his child. And his two children. I saw another man. He left his wife, loving wife who loved him. And his children loved him. And he went to the back room and, 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 and hung himself. So many, so many people, things are working. But they are not happy because they are missing the first step of obeying the word of God. It is obeying. It is obeying the word of God. It is doing the will of God that bring peace. They bring contentment. They bring happiness. We see so many celebrities. They have marriage. They have things. They have money. They have everything. But they, they divorce. Because it's not money that brings happiness. It's doing the word of God. It's obeying the word of God. It's obedient. If you need a real blessing. Peace that was stolen will come back. Joy that was stolen. Contentment. Meaningful life. You need to obey God. Follow the Bible to the letter. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek God first and do the right thing. We will live holy. The rest of the things will be added to you. When King Solomon became the king of Israel, he didn't play to be a big king. He didn't play that he won to be very famous or have a lot of security and his prestigious uh, 
position. But he prayed for God to guide him in, in his leadership. But the Bible say God gave him that wisdom. He prayed and he gave me additional things like riches, money, and fame, and prosperity. That's what the Bible says, Matthew 6, that it is seeking the word of God, doing the will of God, that open the doors, and the rest are additional. Money is additional. Peace, the things you need, like mortgage, wife, spouse, husband, the additional. First, do the first step, obey. The rest of the things will come. Matthew 6, that three is obedience, that work. The rest are added after obeying. First step we miss, everyone we miss most of the time in life, it is obedient. The Bible, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. It's obedient we miss. So do the right thing and everything else will It's light that work, doing the right thing. Doing light. It is doing light. It's doing light. May you be blessed as you practice obedience. As you practice your obedience. Hallelujah. May you be blessed as you follow the word of God to the letter. And the door of heaven, of bounty of heaven will be blessed. The blessing of Deuteronomy 28. 2 to 14 will come to you. 3 to 14 will come to you if you obey. Obedience is the one that opens the windows and the door of your blessing. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Hallelujah. God help us to follow you and obey the wind of your blessing.